You all know her best as Gilly, the badass wildling who found Ragar Targaryen in that diary. Please give a warm round of applause to Hannah Murray. Second time at Con of Thrones. Yes. Welcome back. Um, oh, I'll also say we're going to do a brief Q&A towards the end of our panel, so keep your questions in mind, um, and I'll give you guys a heads up when it's time to do that. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Here. Yeah. I mean, this is so awesome. How are you feeling? It's all over. Yeah, it's a really, really strange feeling because it's sort of come in waves of like when we, like when we got the final scripts and then when we finished filming the final season and then but it was always kind of knowing that I felt like it wasn't really over until it had all aired on TV and everyone had seen it and it would kind of completed that journey together if that makes sense so uh, yeah doing all the kind of last round of press and then kind of coming back home after that and it, that was when it really sank in that it was over and it, yeah it feels really weird and quite sad yeah I know it's I mean it's like a grieving process yeah. in a big way because it's a whole transition yeah absolutely did you watch all of the episodes was that part of the process for you i did not <laughs> i've actually only seen uh i've still only seen episode one of the final season uh because i was traveling so much while it was while it was airing so yeah yeah um gilly i mean congratulations on surviving thank you very much. Yes. thank you thank you one of the rare the rare survivors. I mean, Gilly had such an incredible journey to go from the situation that she was in, the abusive household of Crasters, to now, is she married to the Grand Maester? What are the rules here? Yeah, I know, someone asked me that earlier, and I'm trying to figure it out. I mean, I feel like the rules have probably changed quite a bit under the new regime, so, and I think they're definitely, I don't feel like anyone's separating those two anytime soon, so yeah. I could see potential wedding bells on the horizon, for sure. Aww, <laughs> wedding bells. I mean, also, not only congratulations on surviving, but on being part of the only wholesome relationship. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good, right? The only couple that is not plagued by tragedy or yes. incest. Yes. <laughs> that's great. Um, do you think Gilly had a little baby John? Uh, I like to hope it was a girl. Um, yeah, I actually had loads of trouble when we were filming that line. I really wanted to say, if it's a girl, we're going to name it John. And I made that joke so many times that then we were doing a take and it was Kit's close-up. And then I actually said that. I said the line wrong and I said, and he looked at me afterwards and was like, you're so... <laughs> so he was like, why would you do that on my coverage? Like, and I was like, it wasn't on purpose. I promise he didn't believe me. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what was it like um, being on set for these final days? Like, what was the mood overall for all of your final scenes? It was weird. I mean, it was kind of, because that was actually my final scene that I shot was that scene, the goodbye, yeah. And which was nice because it felt like the perfect one to end with. But um, yeah, I think it was like, it was weird because we were sort of losing people throughout that final season. It was always like somebody's last day and it was kind of this mixture of like very, celebratory and very sad so it was kind of bittersweet i guess yeah and they they did this really sweet thing where they gifted everybody a special storyboard yes, right of like did. yes what was your storyboard uh, my storyboard was um the white walker attack from season three and i remember dan weiss uh, pointed at it and said that's the monster and that's you um <laughs> and then yeah and then they made they did like a speech for each person as well when they when they gave the storyboards to us they would sort of say a few words that were really um just really lovely and really personal and very heartfelt so it, was, it made it very special yeah for sure and i know uh a lot of the cast and crew has gotten up to so many like prank antics <laughs> over the years some of which you've been a part of but were there any like epic prank wars for this final season um i i mean i have only been involved in one prank which was the john uh, Bradley costume prank, which we did on season six. Does everyone, do you want to tell that yeah, story? Yeah, I can tell that story if, people, if anyone is unfamiliar. We, uh, so I was at the premiere for season five, and uh, David and Dan told, they were like two words for the next season, uh, new costume. And I was incredibly excited because I had the same costume for uh, 
and long, yeah, for four years at that point. And uh, so I uh, sort of scuttled over to tell Kit this exciting news, and he was like, that means John should have a new costume, too. <laughs> and, uh, and we got quite carried away, and we ended up emailing David and Dan, saying, like, you should give John uh, a new costume, long robes, maybe pink. And uh, we sort of thought that was hilarious, and that was as far as it was going to go. And then they, uh, as they are want to do, uh, took it and ran with the idea and um, gave John a fake script, which included a very elaborate description of Sam's new costume when uh, he and Gilly arrived at Horn Hill, uh, which they then, we, we were like, that's hilarious, that's so funny. And then they took it a step further and, um, and got the costume department to make John a new costume. Um, which I, which they then sent photos of to me and Kit, and it was kind of like, imagine like a kind of like psychedelic Henry the Eighth. I think is the best way to describe As it. You do. As yeah, you. including a cod piece, um, and uh, and I had to like this because this went on for weeks and weeks of John thinking because we hadn't shot those scenes yet, so he he thought he was going to have to end up wearing. This thing, he would talk to me about it, and he was like, "Have you seen? Have you seen my new?" <laughs> and I had to lie. And be like, no, no, no. And he was like, "They've made my hat comically large." <laughs> um, and he would just yeah, go on these rants about how stupid he thought it was going to look. And then eventually, we uh, in Spain, we told him uh, that it was um, that it was not true, and he uh, he said some very very rude words to, <laughs> to all of us. But he, yeah, and he said about it. He was like, "You always think." that you could never get pranked, that you'd see it coming from a mile away, and he was like, I had absolutely no idea, I just completely believed it. Totally fell for um, it. But yeah, so that was my last, my last prank, my one and only prank involvement. But uh, yeah, I don't remember anything big happening on the final season, I think. You guys were kind of busy. Look, yeah, pretty busy. And I think, was, uh, yeah, I think like, all the good ideas have probably been exhausted by then, so. Uh, what was the table read? Like, because we saw little pieces of it in yeah, the documentary. Yeah. It looked so emotional. It was really emotional, yeah. And I, because I'd never been through whatever combination of circumstances, I'd never been at a table read for Game of Thrones before. Um, and it was definitely, it was the first one, I think maybe ever, where everyone was kind of in the same room reading the scenes together. I think they used to, before they would like split it up and read the different storylines different story at once. But uh, this was, yeah, everyone, it took like, I think two days to do the whole thing and have everyone there. And I read in for a couple of people as well who weren't there, which was quite fun. Which, um, which folks did you read? I read Yara. Oh, that's the only one I remember because um, yeah, Gemma wasn't around. But um, yeah, and it was just it was yeah, it was amazing. It was I'd already read the script, so I knew what was coming. But as I think you may have seen in the little clip, some people it was their first time finding out, and so yeah, watching like, Kit and Liam's reactions was pretty. Amazing. Oh yeah, Liam had him, Liam Cunningham had a real amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he was all shocked right along yes. side everybody. Yeah. What was it like for you seeing how Gilly's journey ended? I, you read them on your own for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it was amazing. I think it's such a beautiful, um, it's just really early that she got a happy, happy ending. And um, it felt like a wonderful place for her to end up. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean Gilly, I, I, I mentioned it in your intro, but she kind of dropped one of the biggest pieces of information in the whole show. And yes. A little undeserved uh, credit to her within Universe, but the fans are giving Gilly all the credit yes. for it. And I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> um, walking us like way, way back, how did you first come to Game of Thrones? What was your audition process like? Um, so I, I got sent this audition for the show, the first season had already aired, so it was a, and I hadn't seen it, I was kind of vaguely aware that there was this HBO show that people said was, was really good, but uh, the casting director is a woman called Nina Gold, who has cast the whole, uh, every season of the show, and she's, uh, she's a really incredible casting director, and I'd, um, I'd auditioned for her a lot in the past, and she'd cast me in a movie when I was 20. Uh, so I, I knew Nina quite well and I, I really respected her a lot and I knew that she cast, she always cast really great stuff. And um, so I was kind of excited just because she was involved and then um, I didn't get given a script, I just got given one 
scene to read for my audition, which was actually from series three. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, and it's when um, Sam and Gilly are sat around a fire and she asks him to sing her a song. Uh, so I started working on the scenes and learning the lines and I realized very quickly just how good the writing was and how kind of rich and complex it was and how many different things you could do with it and how many versions of this character there could be and so I went in kind of ready to really like play around with it and try all these different things out and then um, I read the scene. So yeah, I met David and Dan and um, Nina in London and I read the scene once and they said, okay, that's, that's great, you can go now. And, uh, and so I thought things had either gone really badly or, <laughs> or really No well. feedback. Once yeah, <laughs> and um, but was, I remember actually, I remember that the waiting room and I didn't see everyone else who was there was clearly going for other characters from me. And most of the people I remember from that waiting room, I think, ended up in the oh, really? show. So like Robert Pugh, who played Crasta, was there and I think Gemma was there, Gemma Beeman. Yeah, because she's um, in season two. Yeah. So, um, so I think they'd kind of narrowed it down to people they were they were keen on at that stage, and um, yeah. So I um, I waited a few days, and then I got the call, and it was great because I just graduated from university uh, that week. So congrats, congrats. job. Belatedly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So it all it all worked out very nicely, and then I, I just shot for one week on season two, and then yeah, obviously came back in season three for much more yeah stuff. But. And season two, I mean, it was. The show was popular, but it was nowhere near the levels of intensity oh, yeah, yeah. at the time. Do you remember when you first realized that Game of Thrones was going to become, like, it was this massive, massive show? Um, I don't know if there was kind of one, like, light bulb moment where, you know, like, everything changed and I had this completely new conception of what the show was. I remember after filming season two, I... So in between two and three, I was spent some time in the States, and uh, which is the country we're in now. I don't know why I said like when I'm here. And, <laughs> and it makes it sound really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I, I spent some time in New York and LA, and it was it was obviously it was kind of bigger over here than it was in the UK. So I suddenly saw like it was yeah it was just before the series was coming out. So there were like posters on buses and things and everywhere, like everywhere I went, I kind of couldn't avoid seeing it. So that kind of shifted my uh, perception of, of what the show was. And then I think the first time I got a real like whack in the face of, oh, this has become a massive thing, was going to the uh, premiere of season four in New York. Yeah. And uh, we, yeah, had this sort of huge premiere and there were so many people outside and people screaming, where's the baby at me? <laughs> and yeah, I kind of realized it had uh, become something quite big. And then, the, yeah, the real, like, where I was like, oh, it's like gone to this sort of other level was um, doing Comic-Con in San Diego. Uh, and- uh, yeah, on season four too? That was, no, that was a couple of years after. That was, I think, after season five, before we shot season six. Gotcha. And, um, yeah, it was like we had like a police escort to get us through the town. And, it, and, and there was like one of our uh, directors, David Nutter, was there telling us that he'd met Obama, who was angry that he had killed John Snow. Like, <laughs> it just, it became this like, yeah, it became this sort of whole other thing at that point. That's when you know is when President yeah. Obama is yeah. mad at your TV show. Yes. <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah, and I mean, you... You're, you worked on Game of Thrones with some of your former co-stars from Skins, like Jay and Yes. Jason. So do you guys collectively just talk about how like wild it is that your careers kind of like went in this tra like trajectory all together? Yeah, I mean, we just feel incredibly lucky, I think, that we have gotten to work together multiple times. And, uh, and I mean, Joe and Jacob are, are such important people in my life and have been for a very long time, and I consider them family so um, to get to I mean we, we never really had like proper scenes together but we right. still got to like we were in Belfast at the same time or we were on set at the same time or we were kind of doing press together and um, yeah I remember because actually Jacob because Jacob joined on season three mm -hmm. um, we were living together in London at the time uh, when he was auditioning and uh, and he's he was very very 
down on himself. He's like, there's no way they're going to cast me. And I just had this really strong feeling that they were, partly because he's so talented and also because he's such a lovely person. I was like, who wouldn't want to work with him? And um, I know David and Dan really value that in the people they choose, that they kind of want to work with people. They want everyone to get on and there'd be this good atmosphere on set. So I was just like, he would just fit in so well. And so I had this real feeling that he was going to get it. And then he did. And that was a really special time to be around when he got the news. And yeah. And you all survived. I know. Again, I know. the odds of that happening. Yes. <laughs> was it like every season you all collectively were like, all right, this is probably... Well, Jacob was always like, he, every season he was like, they're going to come off. Every <laughs> single season. He, like, without fail, he'd be like, this is my last year. Like, I just know it. Guy. Like, he, like, before the script came in, he was always like, I know they're going to kill me off. But he always had like these really complicated theories as to why it was definitely going to be here. And I was always like, I feel like you're wrong, and I feel like because you're so <laughs> convinced of this, it's definitely going to be the opposite. And, uh, and yeah, it very much was the opposite. Yeah. If you go in overconfident, being like, oh, I'm definitely making it this year. Yeah. That's like, that's the death note yeah. right there. Um, so, I mean, in addition to just surviving, what was something about the season eight scripts that surprised you most when you first read them? Oh, um, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Uh, There's no like, oh shit moment when... <laughs> I mean, I think there are some very obvious oh shit moments. I mean, I feel like the, um, the whole uh, big, big final uh, Jon Snow killing Danny moment when I read that and then and also then seeing Kit react to it in the reader, and then, uh, yeah, I just had this, like, there was such a kind of sense for me around what a huge, huge moment that was going to be for people. Was it tough to keep the secrets for so long? Um, it was because it was a really long time. <laughs> it was longer than normal, I feel like, because we shot for nine months instead of six months, and I just felt like there was this, like, it was just a much longer period of kind of knowing that information and not being able to talk about it. And I mean, luckily we can all talk about it amongst ourselves, which, which helps. But um, yeah, it was hot. And I think because I came to uh, Con of Thrones in Dallas last year, and that was the first time I'd done one of these sorts of events. And it was... Because uh, you knew then. Yeah, I knew everything that happened. We finished filming, so I, I knew it all. And, uh, and it was, yeah, you feel like you're sort of this weird, like, ticking bomb that could go off and just ruin things for everyone. But I managed to, uh, yeah, I managed to keep it together. I feel like I would have, like, stress dreams about, like, <laughs> accidentally texting the wrong person. Or yeah, something. yeah. But now we're free. You can yell as yeah. loud as you can. It was, yeah, those are those, I was, like, really looking forward to that day when it was all out and everyone knew and, yeah. Yeah. Did you secretly tell anyone not in the cast? Uh, n no. Uh, not this year, but I have <laughs> I have a bad history with uh, <laughs> revealing things. Um, yeah, I told a friend of mine at his. I just finished filming season five, and I went to my friend's birthday party in London, and uh, I had a couple of drinks, and uh, <laughs> as you do, and I uh, was I was so excited because it was around. So it was this very interesting time where. Like, we just shot um, Kit's death scene, and uh, we didn't, no one knew apart from like Kit and the producers that he was coming back. We, the whole cast was told, like, this is it, he's shot his last day, he's done, he's going to move on to other things. And there was just this feeling of like, there were little kind of whispers among the cast and crew of like, is it though? Like, it just, <laughs> like, and because I remember my, my friend Katie, who works in costume, she, I was like, do you think? I was like, I can't believe it. Like, he's done. And she was like, I don't think he's done. And I was like, why? And she was like, I was there on the last day, and he just didn't seem sad enough. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, but so it was. So I was kind of. I was so interested in this question of what was going on with that, and um, so I really wanted to talk about it. And, uh, and I did to my friend whose birthday it was, and obviously that meant revealing this like gigantic. Well, first, yeah, first even just the fact that he was, he was going to die was such a big reveal, and then also the fact that there might be this even bigger twist coming up afterwards. I uh, it made him really sad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he loves On his birthday, yeah, he loves the show, and he was like, "It's my birthday. Why are you like, ruining my favorite thing ever?" On my birthday. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so I think after that I learned my lesson and I tried to be better about keeping it keeping it to myself. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, there were so many of those kind of like dramatic twists over the years. Yeah. And uh, that was probably one of the, <laughs> the bigger yeah, ones yeah. To, to leak ahead of time. Yes. But, yeah. Good thing Birthday Boy kept it to he did. himself, so it didn't <laughs> ripple out. But uh, yeah, I mean, in general, looking back, is there a particular day from filming or like with Kit's final day that sticks out in your mind? Uh, just for whichever reason. Um, one of the things that really sticks out to me is when, when we shot season six and we did all the stuff at Horn Hill, it was so exciting for me and John because well, I had only shot in Northern Ireland up till that point and John had, uh, had done stuff in Iceland uh, as well, but that kind of comes with some quite unpleasant uh, challenges in terms of the weather conditions. And, so, and that we were so jealous of all these people going up to Spain and Croatia and Morocco and like they'd send you videos of them like jumping off a boat into the ocean. It was just like <laughs> sickening. And so, uh, so when we found out that we were going to get to go to Spain and do stuff there, um, we were really, really excited and we just had this amazing week filming there and, and getting to do the stuff with Sam's family was so interesting and having that whole new bunch of characters who were all played so wonderfully by those actors and it was just something and we were in this like incredible kind of Spanish castle. It was just, it was just like a that was a very special time that really sticks in my memory. Yeah, it was a gorgeous location. I mean, we it was nice to see just more of the world of Westeros. Yeah, like, yeah. It almost reminded me of like Italy in a way. Yeah. You know, like a little villa, although I guess it was Spain. But, yeah. <laughs> Same, not the same, it's fine. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, so season eight. You said it, f it feels like a little obviously bittersweet. Are you still in like group chats with all the, all the actors? Yeah, we have, a, uh, we have a WhatsApp group. Nice. Um, yeah. Keeping things like, I feel like, I mean, and for a lot of fans too, it's almost like this like wave that's slowly like affecting everybody, you mm -hmm. know? Like it was, we hit such a peak with these final episodes and it's a big deal to have it all be over and you know it is, yeah, it no is. new Game of Thrones. No. Although there might be other Yeah, fingers things. crossed for yeah. for prequels. Yeah. Although we can't see Gil I mean Gilly's like oh, ancestors might be <laughs> involved. Gilly, from what I know about the prequels it's a very long time before. Thousands of years, right? Uh, just a very long time. <laughs> I don't know any more than that. But yeah, no, none of our lot are going to be involved in it, so. Yeah, or do you think that you'll watch it? Uh, yeah, curious? yeah, I am curious, yeah, for sure. Yeah, just to see all of the different yeah. avenues that they might take. Yeah. Have you read the books? Uh, I have read some of the books. I, so I, I used to read, I would read them as we did them. So I read the first two before I shot season two, and then I read the third book before we shot season three. And then uh, David and Dan told me before season four that Gilly had gone completely off book at that stage, uh, which was around the time a lot of stuff was, I think, starting to go more off book. And so I didn't want to read the books and have two different versions of her and two different plots in my head, because I thought that might be confusing. So I stopped reading at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like even just watching the show, I get confused sometimes <laughs> between like varying plot lines. So it makes sense from like a performance standpoint that you don't want to be like reading into something that isn't actually happening for Gilly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, season eight, Gilly. I'm so, I'm just, I'm, I keep going back to this, but I'm just so happy that Gilly survived <laughs> and that you made it. And now there's baby girl John. That's what I've been uh, really out in the world. Yeah. That is going to be canon. Um, well, we can open it up for audience questions for a little bit if I think there's a mic that, mic's up here? So if folks want to line up, um, if you have a question, um, we can do a little bit of a round of those. Great. But in the meantime, we can keep chit-chatting. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so season eight ended with, like you said, like the Danny and John thing was sort of like the biggest shock to you. But you, have, you didn't watch it play out on screen. I haven't seen it yet, no. Did you, like in that reading, were, were folks talking about like, how you thought they might do all of the visual um, effects and stuff because you guys do, you guys never get to see that just in the script there yeah, are all of these visual effects yeah there's so on. many layers to how the show is made so that's the thing even if you've, I mean, if you've been 
on set on the day when you watch the final product, it can be very different from what your kind of eyes saw on the day. So yeah, I feel like it would be pretty cool to watch like that, like transformative part of the page to screen, uh, but in a completely different mode. Oh, we have a question. Hi. 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 Um, so my question is, what was the one thing that you got to steal off set? <laughs> More thievery. <laughs> Um, so I've, I've answered this question a few times now and people seem to be very disappointed with my answer so I apologize in advance. But um, the one thing I took, I think I took it on season four, was a pair of waterproof socks. Um, because we, we you know, film in a lot of kind of wet, muddy conditions and so they have these really, really great socks to keep your feet like, completely warm and dry and I thought they were so good and I wanted them and so <laughs> I stole them and I got told, well not told, I told my, I told a friend of mine in the costume department that I, I was going to take them and she was like please don't take them because everyone's been taking them because they were so great and, and I was like but I really need them because I was doing this little independent film at the time where my feet were constantly wet and cold and I was like and they didn't have the budget for those kind of high tech uh, socks so I was like I really need them for the other jobs and she was like okay but just don't tell anyone I let you uh, them, but yeah, I don't have anything like super cool. Like, um, and John always said the one thing he wanted to take was uh, the thimble that Sam gives Gilly, and uh, it sort of disappeared. Uh, we like it, it wasn't around on season eight, so he wasn't able that's to so sad. take it. But yeah, thank you. I love the sock answer. That's that's a great answer. It's practical. It's very practical. You're gonna like use it. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Hey. Hello. Uh, I was wondering when you were preparing for the role, did we did. Uh, the writers give you any uh, backstory to Craster that was never in the show? Um, the only thing I was, so this wasn't, so when I was preparing for the role, this wasn't like a backstory thing, but they did, um, David and Dan advised me to read uh, Room, uh, the oh, novel, right. which is, has been turned into a very successful right. film since, um, as, as a kind of, to get a sense, because they thought it was a very comparable situation uh, that Gilly was in. Uh, so, but yeah, they didn't give me any kind of backstory at that stage, but there was um, a deleted scene that we shot on, I think, season seven, uh, where Gilly talks about um, the white, like, uh, the Craster's sons turning into the White Walkers and her having always been aware of that. So that was something, in a way, I wish I had known. Um, <laughs> I wish I had known at the beginning, because I remember asking at one point, or maybe season three, I was like, why did the White Walkers want the babies? What are they doing with them? And they were like, good question. We can't <laughs> tell you. Uh, but yeah, so that was the only thing that kind of gave a little bit more, more backstory, which I had this like, nice monologue about um, like knowing that. And, yeah. Uh, what did you say in that deleted scene? Sorry? What did you say in that deleted scene? What oh, like word for word? Yeah. We're making to? you work here at the con. Um, the main, yeah, it was like the, um, I think that all, that all of the Craster's wives referred to the White Walkers as Craster's sons. That was like their name for them. So yeah. Yeah, I think that was like a lore question that came up a lot among fans. It was like, is every White Walker a baby that was turned or like, yeah. not? It's like a rectangle and square thing, I think, where like uh, all of Craster's sons became White Walkers, but not all White Walkers yes. were Craster's sons. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi. Um, you mentioned that the complexity of the writing would have allowed you to take the role in a bunch of different ways. Um, they seem to really like the one take that you did, <laughs> but I'm curious what you were planning on doing differently if they had multiple takes. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think it was just, I feel like in that scene, I feel like the relationship between Sam and Gilly was very much still being negotiated. Uh, so I feel like there were kind of different levels of, like, like a sort of bluntness with which she spoke to him versus like a, a real kind of kindness and a sweetness. And I kind of was interested in feeling that out, like how, because I, I love how, uh, how gradually their relationship develops. And so I was interested in the different kind of side avenues that could have gone down in that time when they didn't know each other very well. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite parts of uh, the character is oh, kind great. of the blunt edge. So okay, cool. Thank you yeah, much. thank you. Hi, Hannah. Thanks for your performance. 
Uh, I wonder what was the most difficult scene to film or the most takes you had to take for one scene? Um, anything involving the babies. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was particularly, I remember one scene that I think we had to reshoot in the end and completely redo all the dialogue. Uh, it was uh, Gary and Sam in the uh, carriage on the way to Horn Hill. And it was the first time we were working with uh, the... Because we'd always had like a lot of babies and we'd use like... We knew we'd use like four different babies a day. Um, and then... Uh, That's amazing. And because they can only work for very limited periods of time, so you have to kind of cycle them in and out. And if one was crying, you could just swap for another one. Um, and, then, uh, and then from season six onwards, we decided we wanted to age them up. So we got this set of twins called William and James who became like kind of, they were baby Sam and they, they played that role uh, for the next few years and um, it was the first day we were working with them and they were really lovely boys, they were one, uh, just about to turn one and they were really sweet and then as soon as we started filming, and to be fair it was very unpleasant like in the carriage, it was really hot and it was kind of rattling around and they just were not having it and so they, they cried constantly and they both did so there was no like swapping in and out situation and yeah that just, it was, that was really 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 tough because we just sort of had to keep going but it, it was yeah and then uh, that that scene kind of had to be cobbled together I think out of little bits and pieces that we managed to get but it was that was a very hard day I remember for sure thank you I love this baby lore that we now know about like the bastards I hate Hi. it um so a lot of Gilly's story hangs out around the wall and then you know you're hanging out with Sam a lot. My question would be, is there any other actors or characters that you wish Gilly could have interacted with? Um yeah, I mean I kind of I'm kind of all of them, but um I guess I feel like I wish I'd had more contact with more uh female characters in general. Um not a lot of those at the wall. Not a lot of those at the wall, that's true. <laughs> and uh, and yeah and so like when I had the scene with uh with a greet and the same stuff with Shireen, that was really interesting. But I think one of my favorite characters is uh, is Brienne of Tarth, and uh, I think um, Gwendolyn Christie is just a goddess. And so, uh, if I had gotten to have scenes with her, that would have been really special. There's another thing actually that I came very close to having a scene with was uh, there's a scene at Castle Black with Gilly and Sam are in the library, and Stannis walks in. And, uh, and I remember reading it and I was so excited and I was like, I'm gonna have a scene with Stephen Delane, who I think is like one of the greatest actors on the show. And then I turned the page and it was like, Gilly immediately leaves the room. <laughs> <laughs> so I always felt like I was slightly uh, robbed of that encounter. I mean, I still got to like, Stephen, we were on set together and we got to kind of, you know, meet and hang out, but we didn't get to actually like, really work together and that, that made me sad, so yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hey. Um, so, kind of outside Game of Thrones uh, and more to a general work direction, how do you manage uh, your work ethic and, and you know, um, uh, devoting your time to this character and, and life outside of, of, of Thrones as a, as a whole? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I think, I don't know, I think you just, I just kind of, like, when, um, a job comes along that I want to do, I just kind of dive into it as wholeheartedly as I can. And then there's always a kind of like weird decompression time in the weeks after you finish filming where you can't quite let go of being so focused on that one thing, but then you sort of gradually that like fades away and then you get back to your normal life. And it just, yeah, it's just a kind of weird like switching in and out of like you have these very intense periods of being really, really obsessed and focused on one thing and then uh, try and kind of get back to my in between. Cool, thank you. Thank you. I was curious as to how your friends and family reacted to you being in Game of Thrones because you've done a lot of work, you've done independent film, and then you're on the show where people are mentioning it in the House of Commons and <laughs> Tory leadership and Brexit. Everyone's making a Game of Thrones comparison. And how, did, how did they react to you being in the show? Um, yeah, I think, um, I remember my family, I had so, my cousins, uh, my cousin and my uncle were the only members of my family who had watched season 
one, and they were kind of into it, so they were very excited when I joined. And then my, um, my cousin's husband came up to me, and he was like, I hear you have this new job, I'm very excited for you. Um, I tried to watch season one, and uh, at the end of the first episode, uh, they threw a child out of the window. <laughs> And he was like, but I, you know, I said, I'm going to keep going. And he was like, and then at the end of the second episode, they murdered all the babies <laughs> in the whole town. And he was like, at that point, I couldn't keep going because it seemed at the end of every episode, something terrible happened to a child. Um, but then I think he, yeah, he moved past that. But yeah, I, think, I don't know. I mean, my, my friends and family kind of, I think most, a lot of my friends I've known for, you know, much longer than I've been involved in the show. And I think they just kind of regard it as like this slightly odd thing that I do, but they don't really think about it too much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hey. Um, so in season eight, everyone, all the women and children go down to the crypts of Winterfell to be safe. Uh -huh. um, and I was wondering how, when you read the script and you saw what happened with the dead Starks being raised and killing people in the, in the crypts, was that surprising for you or how did you react to that? Because you and baby Sam were there. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the best plan, was it? <laughs> um, yeah, I, so, I mean, I think that, that like, filming that whole sequence was, was really tough and I feel like it reads like like it sort of read like a horror movie and shooting it felt like one as well um, but yeah I was um, I was I was kind of I was kind of scared reading it how unpleasant it was going to be to shoot it and sorry to like loop back to my favorite topic but the I was really scared about doing that stuff with the kids uh, and then being so kind of heavily involved in how that was going to work um, Practically, that was like my biggest concern, and it was. I, I worry that we've like traumatized those children for, for life with um, with scary zombie creatures. But um, were they okay? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out in like ten years yeah. when they're in therapy. Yeah, there were some tears. I'm not gonna lie. Aww. Yeah, it was pretty sad. Because I know, and to like leap off of that question, uh, we saw in like some of the behind the scenes footage that. Sophie Turner and Peter Dinklage had like filmed some stuff that didn't actually make it into the cut of the mm -hmm. episode. Like they were a little more involved in like fighting some of the whites. Was that also the case with with you or with any people that you were around? Like were you doing some action in the in the way that it was written in the script? Uh, yeah, I, I, I like I haven't I haven't seen the right. final episode, so I don't know exactly what's made it in and what hasn't. But I believe that there was some stuff. Uh, with me and baby Sam that just kind of didn't, it just didn't work out um, in terms of uh, the logistics of what they were kind of, the reactions they were expecting the children to have were kind of a little too complicated for kids of that age to understand how to perform. Yeah. Because uh, you know, they're very young, they're not really, and they're not really actors yet. You can't um, explain what like an undead skeleton white yeah. is to a child. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I think there was some, some of the kind of complexities of what was going on with, with Gilly and baby Sam kind of got lost a little bit on the classroom floor, is my understanding. But like I said, I haven't seen yeah. the final sequence to know exactly what made it in and what didn't. Yeah, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Though. It's also that weird thing, like, because that, that episode is so epic and there's so much going on, but when we shot in the crypt for a week and you feel like you've done like enough to, like every, it's, there's so much going on and there's so many important characters down there and you feel like that's like the whole world of that episode. part of the story and that episode and then you realize there's like, and then, I mean I think it was like 60 night shoots they did to complete all the yeah. above ground stuff. And yeah. It's just, yeah, it's, it boggles my mind. It was epic is absolutely the word for it. Uh, you done. Hi. Hi. First off, I'm a big fan ever since Skins when you played Cassie. Thank you very much. Happy birth month. <laughs> Want to tell us about celebrating your big 3-0? Um, yeah, I, uh, I had kind of just like a low-key uh, weekend in, I live in Los Angeles now, and so I just, I got together with uh, some friends in the daytime and had some drinks and some tacos. And then, um, and then I went for dinner in the evening with um, Jacob Anderson and uh, my friend from Skins, Nick Holtz. Um, and
and that was like a really, I was, it was just like really wonderful to be surrounded by people I really care about and yeah I kind of think in, in the run up to my birthday I just thought like oh I have to do something huge because it's like a milestone birthday and then I realized I didn't really want to do that so uh, I just yeah I just had like fun with people that I love. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned a little bit earlier how you wished that you had worked with maybe some more women on the show, but uh, Gilly and Shireen's relationship was one of my favorite things yeah. in like, yeah. that mini arc. And then we got a nice little ode to Shireen in yeah. season eight. We did. What was it yeah. like filming that? Yeah, it was really lovely. It was it was great to get to work with Liam, who I think is such a wonderful actor and also such a, a fun human. But um, I, yeah, it was, it was interesting. I did. Uh, a talk recently with Brian Cogman who wrote that scene and he told me that the original version of it was very, because you know, it was about having uh, Gilly and Davos together because of that connection they have of both uh, knowing Shireen and both having been taught to read by her. And he said originally that his sort of first go at that, that scene was very like on the nose and it just like was in this very contrived way they kind of realized that and then talked about it and he was like that didn't really sell and so I thought yeah I love the subtlety of that um, and the little girl who uh, was in the scene with us was was so gorgeous and wonderful and so it was just a really um, a really wonderful scene to do yeah yeah and I don't know if you know this because you haven't seen the episode but they play like a little bit of Shireen's music in the background like really softly and I, I didn't notice until the second time that I watched it and I like just immediately started crying. <laughs> yeah. It was really, like, I think that that entire episode is really emotional, but that was just like, I think that that's when the floodgates kind of started for a lot of fans, kind yeah. of getting like hit in the heart a little bit. Yeah, it's yeah. A dream moment. Yeah. Um, what you mentioned, uh, your last day on set was obviously emotional. Was there another uh, part of season eight? Like, did anything catch you off guard while you were filming season eight with? how emotional things things got? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think, I mean, to me, it did kind of all come down to that last day, I yeah. think, if I'm being honest. I think, yeah, I, well, I think the, the table, the emotion of the table read, and then the emotion of the final day were the real, like, hard-hitting. Yeah, for me. those are two really intense endpoints yeah, for, yeah. for this final season. We have one more question. Um, first of all, I love Skins too. I still oh, say you. it's like hazy days, like all the time. Oh, cool. So, um, but I was just curious, I had read that a lot of you, or like none of you, guessed who got the throne, um, or figured it out, and I was just curious who was like the most common idea, or who you thought, or, because I didn't expect that either. <laughs> um, I actually, so I think someone's unearthed like an old interview with Gwen. Oh, that's right, yeah. She's where she one. says she nailed it yeah, yeah. she's just <laughs> yeah. like i don't know i just like yeah um yeah i i remember doing an interview we were asked to um it was all of the women together we were being interviewed together and we were asked to point at the person we thought uh was gonna end up on the throne and i think i pointed at amelia but more because it was like a i was like if i like the easy option mm -hmm. um but uh yeah, I, I kind of, I'd been leaning towards Sansa for a while, Woo! Um, over the last few years, like, as she's kind of come into herself more and more, that was kind of my, that was my secret hope, I would say. Um, I think we get to give you that win, because she well, technically yeah. becomes queen. Yeah, she gets, <laughs> it kind of counts, but um, yeah, that was, that was my, my slightly wrong prediction, but slightly <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Would you guys swap theories a lot, or was it sort of like, we'll just wait for the scripts? Um, I think we swapped theories to some extent. Um, yeah, I do know, because I do remember there was a, Jacob had told me he had had some like night out with David and Dan, and I think Amelia and Natalie, and um, at one point in the evening he thought it would be like maybe he'd get away with asking uh, who was going to end up on the throne. Um, and uh, this was maybe, this is quite a while ago, it was like season four or five. Whoa. 
And uh, so he, he just sort of threw the question out there thinking he'd uh, not be you know, just be like told to not ask. And, uh, and David said to him, um, I'll tell you who doesn't end up on the throne. Whoa. And pointed at Amelia. Wow! Spoilers! Oh, um, yeah. Oh, really? And so, uh, and so Jacob told me that, but was like, don't tell anyone. And uh, yeah, we had this whole... <laughs> so Jacob knew for like years that that she Daddy wasn't that Danny wouldn't be there. Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah, and so like so that when I found that out, I was sort of like, okay, I have to rethink some stuff. Um, but yeah, that was the only that was the only real. I remember that was like this real like little nugget of information that we had that we, that we sort of kept secret. And I don't know if he told Amelia or Natalie that they had said that to him because wow. it was very like it was a very discreet. Little, right. Um, I mean, I would assume not. Amelia. I mean, in like interviews ahead of time ahead of the season and like afterwards, she said that she was pretty shocked by, I mean, she was really shocked by her death, but I feel like if she had known that Danny wouldn't get the throne. Yeah, I mean, I feel like she was more, it was more she was shocked by the manner of it. The, like, yeah, the turn towards the kind of like mad queen version of, then she was necessarily shocked by not get, ending up getting the throne. throne. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Jacob has, <laughs> yeah, the deets from the get-go. Yeah, yeah. It's impressive. Um, yeah, what, I mean, were there any other secrets? I, now I just want to know about all the, all, tell me all the secrets yeah, that you guys I mean, knew. Yeah, I'm like telling you <laughs> secrets that you already, I know, it's just whether we, yeah, that's, that's the only big, I remember that was the only like big thing I felt like I had any kind of like inside track on. Yeah. Uh, was that, yeah. Because whenever I asked questions, I didn't get any answers. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I mean, there's like, do you feel like a palpable relief that you're no longer having to watch what you say after oh, a couple yeah. drinks at a birthday party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's still, it's still, I feel like I have a weird, like, because even, like, telling that story now, sure. it's, a, it's the first time I've ever sort of spoken about that to anyone but Jacob, and I'm sort of a bit like, am I allowed to say, even though, like, everyone knows that she doesn't end up on the throne, I'm like, are we allowed to say that we knew? I don't know. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it is, like, leaning into that feeling of, like, there's no more Game of Thrones spoilers. It's all, it's yeah. all out there. Anyone could have watched it if they didn't watch it by now. It's their own fault. <laughs> well, on that note, thank you so much for being here and for sharing this <laughs>